In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a great impact sound using Equator 2. This is the sound we're going to be making. And that tail goes on for a long time. It sounds really great. It's really simple to do. Let's go ahead and click new and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the sampler. And if I come in here and type in water, there's a thing called water scrape texture. And if I load that, it's loading the file, but there's actually seven files in here. So it's like a round robin. Every time I play it, it's going to scan through the files of the different seven hits and play them. So let's just check these out. That's one, two, you, f you can get the idea here that they're all very similar, but each one is different in you know a, a myriad of ways. But they're all gonna be able to stay in the sort of the same space, so it's perfect for what we're doing here. So that's pretty much all you need to do that. And if you jump into effects and come in and add big reverb and maybe choose a preset like massive and bright, and we already have a really great impact, but we can make it a lot better. Let's come in and activate this other one. And in wavetable, I'm gonna to come to single cycle and just load up a sine wave. Go ahead and solo it for now. And that's what we have. But what I wanna do is take the coarse pitch here and route it to LFO2. I'm gonna come into modulation, LFO2. Make sure it's going over there. 50% seems about right for now. And let's listen to what we got now. And in fact, I'm gonna jump into effects and just bypass that big reverb for a second. We're gonna put it in at the end. Next thing I wanna do is take the frequency and bring it way down, like way down, almost to zero, but just maybe 0 0.03, 0 0.02. All right, so I'm just having it go up right here, but what I wanna do is change the polarity to buy. All right, and I'm gonna pull the level way down. So let's listen to those two together. And let's listen to them together with the big reverb. I might even pull it down a little bit more. I just want it to be kind of in the background and especially on the reverb tail to have that sign ring out over time. The next thing I wanna do is jump in and leave it on granular here. And instead of textures, I wanna come into the Foley folder. But before I do that, I actually want to come in here and type in water again. And here we can actually look inside of the water scrape texture folder and see the seven different sound files. But that's not what we're looking for here. Here we're looking for Foley. So again, I'm going to come in here and I really like the bubble wrap noises. So I'm going to double click to load that up and solo it. That's what we got. Maybe change up the position. And for this one, I want to take the level and send it to LFO2. Let's go three this time. 100% perfect. Come over to LFO3 and let's do falling sawtooth. And I'm going to turn on sync. And right now I've got a bar long MIDI note triggering this effect. So I'm going to bring this up to a little bit over a bar. So if this is a bar, I want to go a little bit past that. Only because I don't want it to kind of come in and go back up again but I'm gonna pull this down and let's see what it sounds like. So it's just adding that crackly bit. I can turn their level down just so it's not so loud. Just adding that upper frequency content, nice crackles. And of course we can use the index knob here just to cycle through the different ones. We could change the position. I also like to boost up the random position. Again, so it's a little bit different every time. Perfect, let's listen to all three together. So you can really begin to understand how we're building this complex impact sound. Speaking of impacts, if we actually jump back in here and turn the offset over to right around here, it's gonna be more of an impact.
But I kind of like the lead into that, the kind of whoosh into it. Another thing that we can do to make this even bigger is come in and turn on another sound engine. Again, wavetable, sine wave is perfect. And I'm gonna come into routing. Instead of going to filter one, I'm just gonna have this go straight out to the dry. And I'm gonna turn this into a bass note. So again, what I wanna do is come into maybe envelope two and let's just make it something like this. And then send the level of this to envelope two. 100%. And if I solo that, that's what it sounds like. That's kind of the shape of it. Probably shorten it a little bit. And what I wanna do is just bring this down three octaves, just because of where the MIDI note is positioned inside of the MIDI clip. And there we go, we got like a punchy subby bass. And if we were looking for just an impact into a breakdown or something like that, this is what we would do. And we could easily bypass it by muting it or just turn off the sound engine when we're using it inside of the track for a new verse or the chorus or whatever. But having it there and having it ready for the breakdown when we need a little bit of low end is a really good idea. So here's everything together. All right, we can pull up the release time if we wanted to, just so it kind of... Yeah, much better. But there we go, we've got the basics for it. I might turn down the sine wave a little bit more. I might come into uh, the granular Foley folder and flip through to find something else that sounds really good with what we've got here. Like that one sounds really good. Maybe turn it down a little bit more. And we've got a really complex, lush sounding impact that we've made in no time using Equator 2. And this is only scratching the surface of what's possible. But I'm gonna leave the tutorial there for now and let you guys go ahead and take it from here. Original, done, done, done. Smoke me up, 